Thank you for joining us for KGW News at 5 o'clock. Our top story this evening, quite a scene at PDX this weekend. Captured on video by some passengers, a driver crashed through the gate, drove onto the airfield with a woman and two kids in the car. Kylie Boshi explains what happened. The pilot of a commercial airliner was forced to stop in the taxiway at Portland International Airport on Sunday after a car drove underneath its wing. Port of Portland police chased the driver and arrested him at gunpoint. You know, it was probably a span of five to five to seven minutes. Um, it all happened pretty quickly. Passenger Allison Whitaker captured the dramatic scene on video. Officers say a man crashed his white sedan through a perimeter gate at the airport with a woman and two kids inside the car. I've seen movies being filmed in different cities throughout the country, and, and I would, yeah, I was, I was for sure waiting for that film crew somewhere. It was, uh, it, it was just surreal. On Sunday evening, an airport operations worker was checking the runway when he spotted a car driving on the ramp near parked planes. The driver waved a white cloth outside the window. When confronted by officers, police say the driver explained they were being chased by several trucks and they crashed through the fence onto the airfield as a means to escape. As officers investigated, police say the driver got back in the car with one of the children on his lap and took off down an active taxiway, forcing a commercial airliner to stop as the vehicle traveled underneath its wing. Emergency dispatch recordings detail the chase. We're heading westbound, 48 right, near United Airlines. Westbound by United Air. The driver eventually stopped near the airport's new E-Gates, where he was taken into custody. Police book 24-year-old Ulysses Tejeda Ayala of Washougal on felony charges, including criminal mischief, assaulting a police officer, and attempting to elude. Booking records suggest that Tejeda Ayala has no criminal record, no history of drugs or alcohol, or mental health issues. He was not available for comment. The woman and children in the car were interviewed and released. An aviation security expert explained, it is unusual, but not unheard of, for an unauthorized vehicle to make it onto an airport runway or ramp. In this case, it doesn't sound like they did anything more than damage the fence. Jeff Price of the Metropolitan State University of Denver said safety measures did what they're supposed to do. No one was hurt. The fence is really not designed to be impenetrable. It's really designed to be a delaying action to allow law enforcement enough time to intercept any unauthorized personnel or vehicles. So in this case, it works. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News. Police have identified the suspect caught on video attacking a man in downtown Portland. We want to warn you, the video may be hard to watch. It happened on Sunday near a Black Lives Matter protest. Officers are looking for 25-year-old Marquise Love. He's accused of beating the driver of a pickup truck who crashed at Southwest Taylor and Broadway. Police say the victim was seriously injured, but is out of the hospital today. Witnesses have different accounts of what led up to this, and we haven't confirmed any of them. If you have any information, contact Portland Police. The parents of an 11-year-old boy who drowned earlier this month are sharing memories of their son. Brandon Raley was attending a youth outing with a Ridgefield Church near Hood River. The group stepped on a sandbar to cool off when the shelf gave out. Brandon and youth pastor Andy Inskeep drowned. Brandon's parents say he was loved by everyone, had an upbeat personality, and was easy to connect with. The house has a different tone with that, and we're a different family now, but we're still a family. But we miss that, um, that giggle that he had and that our uh, family had together uh, with him. Brandon died just days before his 12th birthday. His family celebrated by ordering pizza and playing video games, the way Brandon would have celebrated it too. Our deepest sympathies to his family, so sad. Now to the coronavirus pandemic. Oregon reported 237 new cases today. Now take a look at this graph. We're, we're seeing the number of new daily cases plateau and the two week average is going down slightly. Health officials say that's good, but we shouldn't get complacent. Now let's look at COVID deaths in Oregon. Yesterday, the state reported zero new deaths, but today it reported nine. So there's not much of a trend in terms of the death toll. But in general, more deaths are being reported now than earlier in the pandemic. 
While some college students are getting ready to head back to school in the middle of a pandemic, others have decided to skip classes this year, even though they got in. Christine Pitawanich talked to one student who is taking a gap year. I just graduated this, this spring, yeah. How'd that feel? It felt good. Um, it's definitely been a long, long time coming. Yeah. Luke Gladen Kolarski has known since middle school Don't feel that he wanted to attend college to pursue music. I'd kind of been like taking the, the most rigorous classes. He spent a lot of his time in high school preparing to get into college. I've always known uh, uh, having a lot of extracurriculars is a plus when applying for colleges. At the end, I ended up applying for maybe nine. He got into one of his top choices. I uh, am going to go to uh, the new school um, in Manhattan. It's exciting. But that excitement was short-lived because of COVID-19. Manhattan is so central for a while. It was like the epicenter of where the virus was and uh, things were so bad there. I knew that um, the that New York would probably not be the best place to be in this coming fall. Plus, he knew he wouldn't be getting the same college social experience and it'd be a lot of money to pay for online learning. The online classes don't work for me. So this summer, he made the tough call to defer this school year. Oh, it's definitely disappointing. Julia Searchin, an independent college counselor, says he's not the only student making that decision. Some schools are reporting that maybe up to 20% of their incoming freshmen for this year have opted to take a deferral, basically a gap year. Luke says most of his friends are not deferring, but staying closer to home. When you defer, uh, there's kind of this feeling of being left behind uh, because everybody else is starting school in the fall. So for the next year, he'll keep himself occupied with a job and trying to put together songs for an album. Uh, which has been a dream of mine for a while. Sanctuary basically financially and mentally preparing for going back to school. With some students deciding to defer this year, one concern is the potential for fewer spots in the fall of 2021 for now rising seniors, since that's when the students who deferred this fall will go back to school. Christine Petawanich, KGW News.